once again, I want to tell everybody to go over to Facebook and follow this show from the Hawkeye of the Storm on Facebook. Now, had a couple of uh, complaints brought to my attention. One, Facebook not showing the page when you search from the Hawkeye of the Storm. So I do have the link to our Facebook page tagged in our description. Right at the top of our description of this video, click on that Facebook link and it'll take you directly to our Facebook page. Thank you in advance from, from the Hawkeye of the the storm uh, yeah. dc hawk i appreciate the super chat is it possible johns becomes the receivers coach Tom? uh no i think it's going to be john budmeyer okay that no that's not gonna, that's not going to make a that's lot of gonna, happy. no i i think that will probably put more folks on the uh on the edge but uh um i i saw the guy with the, the comment towards me about it being a ho-hum ho-hum hire and that I play it safe. So um, anyway, <laughs> it's okay. Everybody's so, got an opinion. Yep. And that's, that's what we're just reacting here. Don, give yeah. me your reaction to what Tom just said, that he believes that John Budmeyer will be the receivers coach. That, I'll be honest. That concerns me, you know, because I, I'd like to think if you played wide receiver, you have a little better idea I've had a coach wide receiver, just as if you played quarterback, you have, I think that's an advantage for you in becoming a quarterback coach. Obviously the, ex, the expert, uh, sit this way. If you play a specific position, you're, you're best equipped to become an expert at that position. So I, I don't, I don't know anything about John in terms of being a receiver coach. I don't know if that's, he ever has been, uh, I would admit, you know, I coach quarterbacks and receivers and I never played receiver because I was always playing quarterback. But I do think that I learned a lot from Bill Snyder and Hayden Fry. And by the time I became the quarterback receiver coach, I didn't know what I was doing at most spots. Um, that's as honest as I could be. I just, I just hope we consider all options. Um, I know we've had some good receivers here that, that have gone on to actually coach receiver, even if it's maybe at a lower level, like Co College, I think, to name one guy that comes to mind. Yeah. And I think he had a great playing career here. That doesn't mean he's not qual more qualified than, than John to be the receiver coach, but it would certainly beg the question, is it possible that he's the ideal hire because he, after all, um, also played here at Iowa and did have a great playing career. Um, and having said that, there are all kinds of receiver coaches right now, I think, that are out there that would love to be considered to be the receiver coach at Iowa. Uh, I know some people might argue. Do you think that? Do you think people wanting to come are that high, that high on Iowa? And I would simply say, if it's been a difficult job in the past, that's a way for you to make your name as a receiver coach to come in here and make make the results entirely different than what they've been. Uh, that's what a, a receiver coach with confidence would say. Yes, I'd, I'd embrace that opportunity because I know exactly how to coach receiver play. And uh, and, and also also those. Uh the, the uh, receiver coach or any coach at, at University of Iowa, that check has crooked numbers and zeros behind it, more than when Don was the, uh, the OC, right, Don? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those checks are a little bit bigger these days. That's well, another attractive thing, too. You're right. You're right. I know a lot of people were concerned. Are, are you telling me that there's no – established offensive coordinator out there that we couldn't raid from another another school. And I don't know who was available and who wasn't. Uh, I would say this, if we're in position to pay a receiver coach more than what he's making somewhere else, then I would think he would think seriously about, even if he is power five, let's face it, all power five schools do not have the capacity to pay as well as we do. So uh, I don't know who... I'm going to be curious what what um, Tim Lester's salary is because right. you know, Phil got a nice bump, and you know if you the going rate for for um, a coordinator in the Big Ten is over a million now. I mean, you know Brian's right. was Brian's salary was fairly inexpensive, um, but I think most salaries you're going to see in the Big Ten are one five for coordinators now, which is insane to me, uh, but. Um, you know, so it's the, the price of doing business these days. So, I guess I, I want to, I want to ask this question. Cause I, I did look this up before going live here. 
based on what I researched, John Budmeyer has never coached receivers. He is a former quarterback. Yeah. He's a quarterback's coach. We know he's been on staff as an analyst for Iowa. Uh, and and obvious, it's obvious that, that Kirk Ferentz really likes John Budmeyer. I think that's pretty clear. And it's obvious that Keith McNamara really likes John Budmeyer. But I am... I would be curious from your perspective, Tom, because you're the individual that just said you think this is what's going to happen. Explain that to fans that would say why. Why John Budmeyer to coach receivers? Well, I think it's it's a level of comfort that Kirk has with him as a as a coach, and I think he feels like he's maybe got a rapport with some of the players. Um, they they respect him. They like him. Uh, that's the assumption I'm going to make. Is and, and I just think Kirk Kirk has a great affection for him and, and thinks he's a good coach. So um, I, I think that's probably what it comes down to. And, you know, you look at tight end, tight end coach, Abdul, Abdul Hodge was, was a linebacker and really never coached on that side of the ball. And, um, you know, he's turned out to be a pretty, I think a pretty solid coach for tight ends. Um, so I, I think maybe they feel like he can just go in there and, learn it and 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 uh and develop there like tim polisek back in the day tim polisek was not an o-line coach but he came in and learned how to be an o-line coach now it helps that you had an oc and a head coach or low line coaches by trade uh right. that that is certainly a real benefit uh but i'd be curious to find out where john budmeyer is going to learn kind of tricks of the trade or where, where he's going to, who he's going to lean on to help him develop as uh, a wide receivers coach. Right. And, and I, I mean, I, all I would echo from, from my perspective, if anybody cares what my perspective on that is, is I'm with you, Don, I, I have concern there. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. that uh, I don't want to fail. I'm just saying I'm concerned about that. And Kelton Copeland's a former quarterback, but he had wide receiver uh, yes. coaching experience prior co- to come to Iowa. It appears that John Budmeyer has not had that. And that is a position where Iowa, Tom, you follow recruiting more than Don or I yeah. do. That is a position they've struggled to recruit at. And I can't imagine that John Budmeyer is going to be attracting great receivers and, and overcoming that stigma. Yeah. The, well, the biggest thing that's going to help Iowa attract receivers is a better offense that throws the ball to the wide receivers and gets the ball in their hands and lets them make plays. And if they can do that, um, that's going to, that makes you interesting to recruits because right now it's just, it's hard. It's a hard sell because they don't throw the ball a lot and they don't throw the ball out to the receivers. So um, I think I'm pretty sure this is still true. I didn't look at the, I know they sent out the final stat book today, but I think Eric Alls, Eric Alls, finished the year as the leading yardage receiver for Iowa, which is wild to think about. 